Welcome back to Trimax Truth Seekers. Really? That's what we're going with? We're testing it. We tested the myth about whether or not we can win a lawsuit, and it was busted. Mm, fair enough. Mm. You know what I love? Hockey. Mm, yes. Um, I like the hockey. I like the, the bronze. Oh, wait, Bruins. Are you... they're, they're good at the um, back-checking and the dangling. But are you... Are you looking at cue cards on how to talk about sports? That's ridiculous. That's as ridiculous as a Gordy Howie hat trick. I hear it's ridiculous. Enough to make an analogy about it anyway. Yeah. So, I love hockey. I was always wondering if uh, the myth was true about whether or not hockey sticks are like bows and arrows. Oh, wait. I actually know this one. This is when a hockey stick stores potential energy as displacements, just like a bow and arrow, and then releases those displacements into a projectile. That's right. That's right. So once again, we depend upon Destin's video from Smarter Every Day because we are lazy and shiftless. The player stores potential energy in the stick by striking the ice before he hits the puck. Now this seems like it would waste energy and slow down his shot, but it actually does the opposite by gradually releasing that potential energy stored up in the stick like a slingshot, the player can make the puck go even faster than he can swing the stick. Look at the overflex here as the stick outruns the player's hands. This means that a good slap shot is all about timing. And not just the timing about where you're going to hit the ice, but also knowing how long it takes that stored up energy to whip out of your stick. It is amazing that it bends that far, and that it works that way. Can we simulate this? Of course. Just watch this power play. That's not what a power play is at all. I ran out of space for the index cards. I couldn't put everything. Why don't you shut your mouth? To test a hockey stick, we use nonlinear simulation. We fix it to locations where the player's hands will be and then put a force onto the bottom to simulate striking the ground. This force is with a nonlinear curve so that it will release very suddenly, just as it will in real life. Let's take a look at this animation of the displacement. So you can see just how far this mulberry wood stick moves. It bends quite a bit, just like the video that we saw from Destin. And then once the force is released, the potential energy stored immediately sends it forward, far further than it originally would. And also, you can see it wobbles because the energy is not quite completely released into the puck. We saw that in the video, too, from the wobbling of the stick after the shot. Now, more importantly, let's take a look at the accelerations so we can see just how much g-force is imparted into the projectile. I'll cut it out so just the end is shown. And now we can see as it accelerates forward, it gets in the upwards of 40 to 50 Gs being put upon that. We can see this from a curve, and we can see the high point at around 25 to 30 Gs. And based on that, I would estimate that a hockey puck of standard mass would be accelerated to probably greater than 60 miles an hour, which seems very reasonable for a slap shot. Yeah, yeah, I would say so, even faster. That's fantastic. So how difficult would you say that simulation was to set up? Oh, it was easier than making all these hockey analogies for sure. Mm -hmm. It was so easy, I would say that even a simple ruffian could do it, like you. Mm. Well, this has been a fascinating look into the mind of scientific madness. Good night, everybody. Have a nice day. That hardly sounds like something I'd say, Andy. Yeah, I know. We're, we're supposed to keep up a pleasant personality, okay? It's in the contract. Smile. Smile and wave. Better.